Ageism in the Workplace Even as the war for talent escalates, compounded by border closures and the impact of the pandemic, an entire cohort of job seekers is being overlooked, despite great potential to bring a wealth of experience and skills to the market. Article by Megan Breen As employers struggle to fill positions, mature-aged job seekers are in a prime position to fill the gap. Yet they are often subjected to outdated stereotypes, portraying them as slow to learn new skills, unable to fit into workplace culture, or unable to keep up with the latest technological advances. Dispelling myths relating to mature age workers is proving to be challenging, particularly when it comes to the belief that older people in general are not digitally savvy. Despite the fact that someone in their 50s or 60s has likely been working with computers for most of their career, owns a smartphone, functions quite successfully in the digital world, there is a reluctance to believe that older workers would be able to pick up the latest new software program or platform required to do their job well and keep up with younger colleagues. According to the World Health Organization, the cost of overlooking older workers is enormous. In Australia alone, it is estimated that if 5% more people aged 55 or older were employed, the national economy would benefit by as much as $48 billion annually. Fiona Lamb, Executive General Manager, Employment Services with Max Solutions, says that between 2018 and 2021, the company's cohort of mature age job seekers increased by 33.8% to more than 30,000 people. She points to the company's recent report, Breaking the Age Barrier, which shows that 30% of employers are reluctant to hire mature age candidates, while 85% of older job candidates say they perceive reluctance for employers to hire older people. Lamb says, We wanted to shed some light on what we thought is an issue, particularly during the pandemic, and highlight what's been happening with some of our mature candidates. Older workers, that's 50 to 60 year olds, make up 18% of our population, but 28% of our candidates. It is disproportionate. According to the Australian Government's 2021 Intergenerational Report, 23% of the population is projected to be aged over 65 by 2061, a rise of approximately 7% from 2021. This means Australia's ageing population will reduce our national labour force, contributing to projections for slower growth of our GDP at 2.6% per annum for the next 40 years, compared with 3% for the past four decades. Lamb says the average length of time for someone to get back into the workforce when they're over 50 can be up to two years. I think the economic impact of this is huge. If we have a whole lot of older workers who still have many years left, but are out of work, they will be unable to pay for their mortgage, and they may be supporting a multi-generation household with children and older family members. This will also place greater strain on the wider community if we have people needing to access their savings or superannuation, which will impact their retirement funds, leading to more people relying on benefits. The cost is more than just economic, says Ian Yates, CEO of Councils on the Aging Australia, also known as COTA. Ageism has a whole variety of implications, he says. Obviously, for individuals, it has a negative impact if it is expressed through people applying for jobs and not getting any replies to their applications. For others, they may get an interview, but as soon as they walk in the door, they can tell from the body language they are not going to get the job once the interviewers can see the person is older. Those things can have a really deleterious effects on the individual, especially when this happens at a later stage of your working life, when actually you should be financially preparing for your post-working life. Lamb says there are plenty of misconceptions about older workers in Australia that need to be challenged. The Max Solutions Report highlights that employers who do take a chance on older recruits agree they are more adept at a range of vital workplace skills compared with younger workers, including dispute resolution, mediation, and managing others. Lamb says employers should look at the whole picture and understand that, while some people might take longer to learn a new system, they may be quicker to pick up other things because they have a higher emotional IQ or bring a higher level of experience and level-headedness. For Roxanne Calder, founder and managing director of recruitment agency EST10 Recruitment, and author of Employable, Seven Attributes to Assure Your Working Future, the negative attitudes about age actually go both ways. Sometimes people in this demographic who are job seekers do themselves a disservice because they carry baggage into the interview. 
they take on the persona that they are older or not as quick as younger people. I've met and interviewed so many people who are in this situation. Lacking self-confidence, letting the bias and prejudice of others affect their demeanor. Unfortunately, it can be perceived as negativity and then be self-fulfilling. Self-awareness around this is really important, says Calder. Organization research tells us that workforces that are diverse in a range of experiences, including age, are generally more productive and more proactive, says Yates. While attention with regards to diversity has been focused on gender, race, and disability, age discrimination has been overlooked, he adds. Cota advocates for a package of measures. We need a public awareness campaign, we need a government incentives that are offered for employment to be widely promoted, and we need to reform the age discrimination laws so they recognize the systemic nature of age discrimination. We also need more proactive retraining opportunities for mature age unemployed people. Taking a good look at your client base can also be beneficial, adds Calder. There are certain brands of retailers that are cleverly matched the people who work there with their customer base. The same could go for an accounting firm. If you have older staff who are knowledgeable and experienced, then your clients are going to appreciate that. Hunter Leonard, founder of Silver and Wise, adds, It's everybody's problem. We are all going to get older, so clearly this is an issue we all need to pay attention to. He adds, Accountants and financial advisors are such a valuable part of our community. They are trusted advisor of business owners, small and large so they can have a voice to speak out against that. They have a lot of potential to encourage a more positive attitude towards mature age workers and job seekers. 